Hello, and welcome to Stories from the View, a podcast from the Pleasant View Senior Center in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts. On this podcast, we invite East Long Meadow residents to tell us stories about their lives and events. And today's guest is Paul Federici. He was on the select board and was also a town councilman here in East Long Meadow. And here is your host, Mary Genoan Kaplan. Thank you, Eric. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, we are very looking forward to this podcast because most recently you have served as the Grand Marshal of the 4th of July <laughs> Parade. Yes. So I expect this will be your journey to the top. There you go. So, <laughs> there you go. So tell us, how did it start? What? Well, I was born in literally Stone's Throw Away in Springfield, Massachusetts, in the Forest Park section, and uh, grew up there and went to Springfield Public Schools, uh, went to Forest Park Junior High School until, for those of, I'm going to probably say this more than once during this, but for people of a certain age, there were some significant racial issues back in the late 60s, early 70s, and then when that started happening, my parents said, well, you're going to cathedral. So for, you know, after, after eighth grade, I ended up at cathedral for four years. And then uh, I went from there to Western New England, college then, not university, and four years there. And then I, I left there and um, went out into the wonderful world of public accounting. And, and I just had my 44th tax season. So you, you do the math. I started when I was six. No, I'm just joking. But anyways... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's I've had my forty fourth tax season, so it's it's I've been doing that for a while. So that's great. And did you then settle in East Long Meadow? How did you? How did your journey lead you here? Okay, when I first got married in nineteen, uh, that's going to be forty two years. Also in nineteen eighty two, we lived in West Springfield for a year or so, and then my grandmother passed away. She lived in like up the street from my parents in, in Springfield, and we bought her house, and we stayed there from uh, 1984 till 1995. when And I started working in, in East Long Meadow in 1986 uh, for an accounting firm on Maple Street. And from there, we ended up in 1995 buying a house up on Hampton Road. And we had to, it, the house was built in 1831. The whole thing had to be renovated inside, so we got that done. And um, um, we moved in, and we've been there ever since. So... Uh, I mean, I love it there. You know, I, I sort of didn't realize how busy Hampton Road was, but, you know, we first moved in there. But it's fine. And, you know, we've been there, well, uh, what's it, 96, 30 to, to 28 years. And um, um, we love it, you know. And I, and I, so I've worked here since 86, lived here since 96. And uh, um, I've grown to love the town and, and, you know, hence the public service, if you will, you know. So Going what's, forward. what's the love? What about East Long Meadow makes it so special for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's a smaller town. It's, you know, it, it seems like everybody knows everybody. Uh, when, my, when my children went to grade school and high school and did kids the things that kids did, I said, everybody knows everybody. So if you try something, you're not getting away, from, you're not getting away <laughs> with it. You know, you're, I'm going to find out, you know, basically. I mean, my oldest son at one point... Um, had decided around Christmas he was going Christmas shopping with his friend and his friend's older sister. I get a phone call from the person who was at the front desk at the high school saying, did you write your son a note? And I said, no. So that was the shortest jailbreak ever. He was gone for like 15 <laughs> minutes, and then he was back at school, and he ended up getting detention. So I, that's, you know, it, it's like everybody knows everybody. It's such a cool place. Um, that's a great story. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. No, so it's, <laughs> but yeah, stray it, it, from the path, and yes, the town yeah, will help yeah, pull you back exactly, in. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so that's one of the reasons, you know. And then, um, as far as politics, that was basically my wife's idea. Um, really? Yeah. Really? We were talking one day, and she said, it's "Like, wouldn't it be nice, or wouldn't it be cool if you know?" So I, I talked to a few people in town who, um, who were fairly well, I guess, fairly influential. In, Influential. I talked to Danny Burak, who ended up being my campaign manager, and John Mayberry and Tom Morissette and Larry Levine, and they all thought it was a good idea. And we met, and, and Larry, God rest his soul, told me everything horrible that would happen to me by being a politician in town. You, know, you won't be able to shop in town. You won't be able to do this. That never happened to me, thankfully. But I did it. You know, I went, regardless, I ran for office, and 
So we ended up, um, it was seven years as a selectman and three years as a town councilor, or as I like to affectionately call it, 70 dog years, because it was, you know, there's, there were times in there where it was sort of taxing, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was an interesting time, and, and I you know, hope I left the town a little better from being, you know, being in office than when it started. I don't know, but that's, that would be my wish, so. Tell us about the changes. What have you seen from your first um, time in office and how our town has grown? And so how have you helped to bring the town forward? How has the town moved forward? Well, I mean, um, obviously we've had growth around the Rotary and everything, which some people love, some people don't like. I tend to appreciate it. Um, everybody seems to think we you lose that small town feel when you develop where you know where Rocky's hardware is and that but I, you know it, it, it's, it's progress you know I re, you have to move forward um, I can still remember when the fire station was there you know because my office for 40 years was on Maple Street right in front of Custom Auto Body and uh, I can still remember the fire station being there and you know and, and it, so it's it's obviously changed and I think it's changed for the better um, you know obviously another thing that happened is during the course of my term we changed form of government which was precipitated by, well, by a few incidences, which we won't get into. But anyways, uh, um, that sort of caused the town to reconsider, um, you know, their form of government. So that was a big change because um, when I was a selectman, we were the bosses. Mm -hmm. I know nobody can yes. see my air quotes, but we were, we were the bosses. And um, once a town manager came in, then that changed completely. And the role as a town counselor was totally different than... The role as a as a selectman because we were, it wasn't we weren't as involved in day to day activities. One thing that was sort of cool um, when I was a selectman was we, if we were looking for new say policemen or firefighters, we got to know them. We we interviewed them. We knew everything about them. So when they got hired, we you know we already had a, a, a good knowledge of them and we knew that you know that obviously they were people of good character and whatnot. And then once we started with the town manager, it was like we they were hiring people and we knew, had no idea who they were. So it was sort of like giving up the reins, if you will. Um, I enjoyed the that type of hiring process because it was, you know, like I said, you've got so many qualified candidates and we got to choose from them. And, and you know, we've, we've been successful. We were successful during our years in the hiring of, of people because many of them are still there or, or have gone on to the FBI or state police or things like that. So, you know, that's, that's a, I find that to be a good achievement too. And also we started the ambulance, you know, the ambulance service, well, full-time firefighters and the ambulance service started during, during the 10 years I was there, um, which was something we wanted to implement. And I, I know, I, I shouldn't say I know, but I'm 99% sure the ambulance service is profitable. Yes. <laughs> the, and we thank you for starting that because it's a, it's an important service, yep. and it's an income stream for our yes. town. Yep. Um, those of us in our age group are, appreciate that. Yes, <laughs> I know. I've seen some of the uh, some of the bills that you get, you get for an ambulance service. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> but yeah, so the, you know, those types of things are what what I like to you know think of as the positives. The, the you know, and obviously now we're still growing. Um, unlike our neighbors in Longmeadow, we actually have some land that can still be developed and and. You know, I'm sure it's going fast because some of the properties are, are um, you know, getting developed now. When when we were early on in my select board career, we had um, the the property that I think it's a Goldstein farm that's now being developed as Happy Acres. Mm -hmm. We had looked at that for town property um, to sort of preserve it, but unfortunately, at that time, the cost was too prohibitive. prohibitive. And we ended up buying um, the property, the Brown Farm property, and mm -hmm. and you know I, I believe if I remember correctly, I think George Kingston had said at one point there's like 200 and something acres all the way to, to you know, um, the other side of town, mm -hmm. and um, it's all it's all been preserved for you know trails and things like that, so it can't be developed. And our community gardens, right? Yes, are, yep. are right there. Yep. So you know that's um, that's. You know, all those things, I think, are sort of positives for the town. So, Absolutely. And, again, even the development on um, with the Rockies Plaza, as yep, you said. Yep. Um, and that was before my time, but still, uh, that's, you know, that. Hugely important, yes. John. Who hasn't, on a Saturday, been doing a household project and needed yep. something? 
and uh, it's so convenient. That's why I stopped on my way here. <laughs> <laughs> Good, excellent. And again, who hasn't stopped for a beverage at the Center Square yes, Grill? Yes, and nice, these, it's nice to have all of that stuff. Yeah, and they've got, I know Bill Collins has that formula down. You know, he's, that's a, that seems like a very successful restaurant, obviously. So um, that's a good thing. You know, and we, we've got... And we've got a variety of restaurants in town, too, so. We absolutely do. Yeah. Uh, and it's still, I think there's still a small town feel. Yep, there Because is, yeah. you run into folks at Big Y or mm-hmm. wherever we're, I should and stop and shop. I don't want to promote any specific yeah, yeah, business, yeah. but it is nice to it's see true. folks. And we have wonderful community events, mm-hmm. which leads us to your other service, which is in the rotary field. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, when did you become a Rotarian? I, th- I think it was 1995 um, um, in that era. And then, um, you know, I was, I, as I discussed, I was president in 2001, 2002. And I, I was treasurer for a long time because um, I found out being a treasurer is like luggage. You can't get rid of it because once you, <laughs> nobody wants to be treasurer. So once you're treasurer... <laughs> They keep every year. They go. Oh, would you like to? You know. Um, but I, does it keep you from being president? It does. Yeah. And so uh, it has a purpose. Right. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> yes, this is true. And I did that for a number of years, and then I was president, and then I was, I, you know, I was like an was an ex officio, so I didn't, I didn't have any other positions in 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 the club. So other than, as you know, we have rotary concerts in the summertime, and we've been doing that it seems like forever. And um, when we first. When I first got involved in the concerts, um, we sold popcorn and soda and things like that. And I had a, I've got a friend of mine who was also, at one point, owned three Dairy Queens. Oh. And he said, why don't you sell hot dogs and ice cream? So he ended up for a number of years. He's a, he's a wonderful guy. He, for a number of years, he donated the hot dogs, the rolls, and the ice cream. And I became the hot dog guy. And, yeah, and I've been the hot dog guy for probably 20 years. And, Exceeds uh, the treasurer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah. yeah. I've been trying every time somebody new comes in the rotary, I go, can you cook hot dogs? I mean, it's not because you know, I'm, I'm trying to pass this along, you know. But yeah, so we've been doing that. We've been doing that for years and it's been successful and we've grown from there. But, you know, the, the concerts are fun um, and and the, the public seems to like them, you know. Um, and like I said, they've been going on for a long time. And, you know, we've had some challenges this year with the new high school being built in that they've moved our band shell up like 40 feet. So it's a, yeah. we have a condensed area now, but, but still, you know, we're attracting the crowd. So that's the important thing. Mm-hmm. So. so the purpose, it's a wonderful community involvement mm-hmm. event and a great opportunity to listen to some good music. Yep. And I hear last week, especially the dancing was wild. Yes. But um, do you raise any money there or what's... Well, What's we the purpose? try to um, break even. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We, we do try to break even. Obviously, the bands cost money. The we we have a new um, um, Bob Hill from W. B. Hill, who's uh, he's a very mechanically creative guy. Um, he built well. He built our concession trailer out of a storage trailer, you know. And that you know, and I mean, it's really it, it's really cool to see what he did. So this past spring, he built. Our new band shell out of a concession. I mean, out of a um, storage trailer, and it's got solar panels on the roof. I mean, this thing's you know top notch because our other one, our, we used to bring the band shell to the center of town for the Fourth of July parade, and it was a toss up whether it would actually make it or not. You know, to, from <laughs> from the high school to the center of town. So so now that we've got a new one, and we've had other Rotary clubs ask if they could borrow it, and and other you know other social groups and things, and it's like. No, because it may not make the trip, you know. <laughs> so now, if that ever happens, at least we have, you know, the ability to uh, to have something that they could use, you know. So, um, but yeah, we mainly we keep it going for it's it's you know we consider it it's free, you know. So mm-hmm. the concerts are free, so that's what the money that we collect from donations and the sales of of uh, you know the the food and whatnot that we have goes back into keeping the thing running. And uh, unfortunately, over the years. You know, my my friend sold his Dairy Queen, so we, we actually we you know we're buying everything now, and it's 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 been a struggle with Friendly's. I don't want to say downsizing, but different sizing. Um, we can't get ice cream from them, so we've had to go to like Big Y and places like that. So everything's been a, more of a challenge, but we're still you know we're still 
running the concerts and you know who knows going forward with the new high school what's going to happen because I know that's that's after this year we have absolutely no idea where or if we can have the fireworks next year because it certainly can't be where it was because there'll be a high school being built there yeah. and you have to have a certain amount I forgot what the square footages or yardages but you have to have a certain amount of space yeah. for safety yes mm -hmm. so I don't know what's going to happen there um, but we'll see but yeah so so the Rotary concerts that's when you know one like Rotary International they've done things like basically eradicate polio in the world through different programs and things and and you know we we donate to, to causes like that through our our Rotary our uh, district and um and we've also, like I said, we do our we do our spot our, our stuff for the town. You know, we um, we do the concerts. This Tuesday, we're involved to a certain extent in the national night out that the police have. You know, just in I think it's just popcorn because um, the fire department does hot dogs that night. So I'm off the. Oh darn! So, no, 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 no. Are you not, freelancing for no, them? No, 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 no. They do their own. So maybe you uh, can scope out their personnel and see if there are any future yeah, Rotarians yeah, in the. I think they actually do them on a, on a gas grill, so they do it differently than ours because ours are are steamed. So, but anyways, yeah. So you know, and there's other projects that we do in town. So we're you know we're very active and we give out scholarships. Tell us about the scholarships, because I think that's a huge program. Yeah, well, we, we started that, um, once again, a long time ago. And um, I know because of the, the, you know, we try to give out, I forgot if they give out four or five scholarships every year, and they're in various amounts, and that's always subject to the whims of the um, of stock market and whatnot, because we have our investments. Um, mm -hmm. And but it, it's a great thing. And then unfortunately, one of our members um, had lost his son years ago, and he started a separate scholarship in his name through the Rotary Club. And that you know that um, that's also grown. Mm -hmm. So we we give out you know like I said five or six or seven. I forgot how many scholarships every year. And that's 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 a good feeling. So it's you know it's a it's a good organization. It's a tough commitment because it's every Busy. week. Busy. It's, well, it's every week. It's every mm -hmm. Thursday at twelve fifteen. So. Mm -hmm. People have to be able to have that flexibility in their, you know, in their work schedule. We've talked about changing it over the years, but we never, you know. Unfortunately, in town, we don't have like a banquet facility, if you will, that could hold, you know, hold something like that. We used to be years ago, well, for a while we were at Twin Hills Country Club, but I don't think our, the membership that went to the meetings at the time didn't, didn't warrant, you know, them keeping us, if you will. So, uh, but... But that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's basically, which wasn't really a nutshell, but that's basically the way, you know, the, the rotary activity and things. So. Mm -hmm. so what else do you have to tell us, Paul? Anything else about the town or how even the parade? You mentioned that you've been involved in the parade as rotary president during yeah. your term, which was fraught with a little bit of stress, as, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I was, I was last, <laughs> I was in the parade um, in 2001, Actually, it would, be, it would have been July 4th of 2001 because I was elected. And my term took effect July 1st. So, um, And that was the year, obviously, of 9-11, which was tough. But uh, I've been involved as a on the parade committee for, once again, 15, 20 years, something like that. Um, and that's been just, you know, getting helping get the parade organized and, and walk, marching along with one of the units and make sure nothing happens, you know. Um, and uh, so that's been fun. And then this year, I was told my wife, I said, I don't know if somebody thinks I'm dying, but uh, I, Carl, Olin, <laughs> Carl Olin came in and said I was, I was named, the, uh, I was named the, the Grand Marshal of the Parade. And I think it was three weeks later, a gentleman from the Lions Club called me and said, I've been named the Distinguished Citizen of the Year. So I came home and I said to my uh -huh. wife, am I dying? Is something going on? Are they trying to get these things in before, you know, I said, you know. Then I guess that's... Uh, you heard I, it I, here first, he's fine. I, and I was surprised at both, but I found out that, I guess last year, this has only happened twice, that same person's gotten both of those. And last year it was Rich Ficero, who mm -hmm. got both, so. Yeah. It must be an Italian thing, I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've been, like I said, I've been involved in the parade for years, and uh, that's that's been fun, you know, just helping to get it organized. And, you know, back in the day, we started at Birchland, and went mm -hmm. to the high school, and I can I can also say because obviously it's public knowledge, it's changed so much. Because mm -hmm. I remember back in those days, when we got to the high school, there was 
a keg of beer in the parking lot. You, mm-hmm. Do you realize how many people would put that on Facebook now if they saw that <laughs> keg of beer in them? But, uh, you, know. you would have more people. Well, no, yeah, well, we, we have people complaining, too. But uh. Uh, So then we decided to switch it to go from once, you know, Birchland got a little tougher because they rebuilt it, and, uh, yeah. and we switched it from the high school to Birchland. And then, uh, you know, we've been doing that ever since. And now this, once again, we're talking about next year, once again, because of the school being built, we're not positive of where we're going to go with it, you know. Mm-hmm. We may go, well, we... I shouldn't say anything, but we were talking about even going back to starting it at Birchland again, but we'll see. Because mm-hmm. um, the, parade's, the parade's cool. And and I've always been, like I said, marching along next to a unit is one thing. But when my wife and I sat in that car this past year and um, got to see it from that perspective, there's a lot of crazy people out there. It was, it was fun. It was fun. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, yeah, it was a blast. I mean, you know, just to see everybody and, you know, and get... Uh, Get my my usual couple of sarcastic comments from Brad Shepard, who's I've known for years. When we when we got to the center of town, you know, um, I believe he said, "I've I've been his accountant for years, and he hasn't gone to jail." And so I had to say, "Not yet." That was like I yelled, out, "Not yet!" <laughs> but There's that was still time. But, I know, but that was fun. So yeah, it was a, it was a fun parade, and you know, got to see a lot of people on the parade route. That there's people I see when I'm even when I'm walking with a group. There's a couple of people I see once a year. One in particular that I used to play basketball with, you know, like 25 years and 100 pounds ago, and uh, and every year I see him, and it's like it's like we're, we never mm. we never left, you know. It's like we were all friends, you know. You come up, hug each other, and say hi. It's it's, it's cool. See, you know, all these different relationships, and, and it's just it's just fun to um, to be in the parade and be part of it, and it's a, that's another feather in our town's cap, if you will. So. Absolutely. For whatever reason, I've participated in a small number of different parades. Mm-hmm. But the East Long Meadow Fourth of July Parade, there are spectators every inch of the way. Oh, yeah. And it's not one or two. It's a mm-hmm. crowd of people mm-hmm. sitting on the curb, lawn chairs behind, standing, mm-hmm. and then on the porches. Yep. It's, um, it's a true community event. And people come from other towns. Yeah. And people, you know, it's funny because you see, like, you, you drive a day or two ahead of the parade, you drive down, like, North Main Street and Maple Street, and there's there's chairs out. You know, people stake yeah. out their spot, you know, a day or two in advance. So yeah. so it's yeah, it's fun. It's, and once again, small town feel, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Springfield has parades, but it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't seem the same, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like that old... If you're a Seinfeld fan and you think of Kramer, it's like the old any town USA. You know, it's like you know, the small town feel. So, so what what lies in the future, Paul? You're still working. Yep. Yeah. You're probably, still you know, counting I'm count. the numbers. Yeah, I'm an accountant, so they probably work forever. You know. It's a, but uh, I, I I mean you know my grandkids live up the street from us, which is which is cool. Um, one thing I was I was told I have to talk about is we have um, as as we had discussed. Um, nine years ago, my oldest son was killed in a car accident in uh, July of 2015. And the, that September, a friend of mine who used to own Bentleys in town had a date at Franconia Golf Course for a golf tournament. Well, he gave it to me, and we had we had our first golf tournament in my son's memory. And that that tournament was absolutely packed. I mean, we had they have a, what's called a scramble where you have everybody goes off on, on a different hole. And they usually have, because ours is at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they usually have one at 7 o'clock for the general public. But we had 36 groups in the afternoon and 9 groups in the morning that first year. So we had, you know, 180 golfers. Um, and he was a golfer. Yes. With yes, you. Yes. So uh, so after that, after the first couple of years, we, we raised money for the grandkids. And then, and then after that, we decided, why don't we start, we started a nonprofit and we started a foundation to raise money. And uh, every year, I mean, we've got people who, and we've had it every year, even through COVID. We had a smaller group then, but and we've got people who've played every year. And uh, everybody looks forward to it. We have a blast. Um, it's a Franconia golf course, and it's August 24th. And we, you know, we're, we're down to just a handful, less than a handful of foursomes. I think we have four, possibly four, definitely three left. Um, you know, we're always looking for raffle prizes and, and other prizes and things like that. Um, but... Um, we have, you know, it's a great time, and we've managed over the years. We've been giving out, you know, we started out, I think it was like four fifteen hundred dollars scholarships at the high school, and then at St. Mary's in Long Meadow, we do a thousand, and that grew to two thousand, and then this year was the first time we gave four twenty five hundred dollars scholarships, so we gave ten grand out 
to the high school, which and, and it's great because it keeps Dan's memory alive. We help out kids. You know, it, it's cool to give somebody a, a scholarship. And, you know, it's obviously it's not this day and age. That's I don't want to say a drop in the bucket because it's important, but schools are so expensive. No, but that's and, significant yeah, money, though. Mm, yeah. Right? And, and we've gotten cards from kids. You know, like a couple of years ago, I got one from one of the recipients and she said, my mother and I didn't know how we were going to get me to college, you know, and that it, what we gave definitely helped. So because it was like a community college or something and that makes you feel good. You know, absolutely. like I said, the golf tournament keeps my son's memory alive. There's he used to play softball and a whole bunch of the guys who play softball show up every year. And it's, you know, and so it's it's fun. Um, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that going as long as I'm breathing and walking, not necessarily in that order, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but it's, you know, I, I think that's important and it, it does take a lot of time, but I think it's worth every minute. And, and it sounds like you do some real good. Yeah, we're, we're trying, we're trying. And so. get to relive some wonderful memories. Yep. Yep. So that's, yeah, that's important. So other than that, I just, you know, just plug along. Um, like I said, I probably, uh, being an accountant, you know, the old joke is we die at our desk, but anyways, it's, <laughs> but you know, I, I have no plans to retire you know if something changes I might but I, I used to have my own well I started out with another gentleman on Maple Street I worked for him and then um, well, I originally started in Aware but we don't have to go back that far um, but when I came to Eastland Meadow I worked for a friend of mine and then he sold out to another gentleman and I went to work for him and then after a while I formed my own business so we had our own corporations within the same business in the same building and at one point, well, in 2014, he passed away. So I took over his business because his wife was our office manager, if you will. So going forward, it was like it was 2018. I, I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, he said, what's your succession plan? And I went, I don't know. You know, it was one of those, because my kid, none of my kids wanted to be accountants. They're too smart. But anyways, uh, <laughs> um, so he offered me. A, you know, he would buy out my practice and I could go work for him for as long as I want. So that happened. It was over five years and the five years was actually finished this past January, which I can't believe five years went by that fast. Mm -hmm. And I can stay there as long as I want. I've got my own group of clients and I absolutely love it. And uh, I can devote more time to them because I don't have to worry about running the business, all the things related to running the business. Yeah. And uh, so if I was 30, yeah, I'd want to be, be at the other end of the spectrum. But mm -hmm. now I just, sure. I'm just doing what I do and my clients... Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, I've had I've got clients I've had for forty years, and I and it's funny because I have this thought process that I'm just I'm just an accountant, you know. So, the thing that sort of drove home that that's more than that was during my son's wake, and then we had a thousand people come through four stairs, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood. One of my clients showed up. He's a dentist. He and his wife, and they were in their dental scrubs. And next time I saw him, I said, "Thank you so much for coming." You know to, to the, my son's wake. And he goes, I've known you for 30 years. And I was like, holy crap, you're right. You know, it's like, you don't think of it in that terms, but you know, and a lot of them end up being friends and you know, 99% of them. And you know, you've seen their family history. They've seen yours, you know, their kids, some of their kids come as clients and it's just, it's cool. You know, it's uh, I don't know. I find it cool. I'll probably sound weird, but that's right. No. You know? <laughs> for a numbers guy, you're still all about the people. Well, and like that's, be, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I don't think I don't consider myself the the uh, same mold as some accountants. Stereotypical. <laughs> yeah, thank not you. Yeah, stereotypical. Thank you. A little yes. zippier. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about zippy, but it's <laughs> <laughs> so excellent. Paul, parting words, or shall we just thank you for coming I, I'm, and chatting with us yeah, today? Was, I don't think I have anything to add, but it's great to be here. And uh, this is this is a fun thing, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to listening because I hate my voice. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to listening to this. So. <laughs> well, we you. think you did just fine. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Okay, that wraps up another episode of Stories from the View. We'd like to thank Paul Federici for being here today. The Stories from the View podcast is available on the LCAT 01028 8 channel on YouTube, and we're also on Spotify. If you have a story you'd like to share on the program, contact Pleasant View Senior Center Director Aaron Kobler by stopping by the Pleasant View Senior Center, or you can call Aaron at 413-525-5436, extension 1401, or you can send Aaron an email, aaron.kobler at eastlongmeadowma.gov. Thanks for listening.